run one three here. I think there's a two five table. Played yesterday. It's a max buy-in game. Most people there had between two and eight hundred. I bought in for three. It was mostly regulars. It was very loose. Uh, passive. Not a lot of raising. Almost no three betting. It should be pretty busy tonight. It's pretty good, busy here all over through the city, so I expect it's New Year's Eve, it's the day before New Year's Eve, so I expect it to be very busy. We'll see. The table hasn't been so great, to me at least. I've been here about an hour. I haven't won a hand yet. I'm down about $50. There was a couple hands where I got out of some serious trouble. Most recently where I had a four. And the flop came four, five, something. And I folded. And I was thinking I shouldn't have. Turn came a four, and I'm glad I folded because the other guy made a full house. He had four or five. So overall, not much happening, but it's a pretty soft table. So I figure it'll turn around. Bang her over here. That's how about that? I mean, not that I didn't want to get rid of anybody, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Maybe we'll just get rid of Curtis and bring her over here. Yeah. No, no, no.
Damn. <laughs> three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Let's see him. So things haven't been going so great for me. I've won two hands in about four hours. I won my last hand about ten minutes ago. My phone died. I haven't even had a good hand to bet to show you guys. I had pocket nines from middle position. And I raised to 15 and I got four callers and I was like, God, the flop comes 10 to 3. And I just shoved. There was about $65, $70 in the pot. And I shoved for about 120 and everybody folded, and I think the last player to call had about $80 in front of him, and I think he folded a 10, because he thought for a really long time, and about five minutes later, maybe like two minutes later, I said, you didn't fold a 10, did you? And he didn't say anything. So the other part of that story is the dealer said, you gotta bluff more, because I told the dealer as soon as I switched, that I've only won one hand in four hours. He's like, you never play a hand, you gotta bluff more. And so, and then he calls me out in front of the whole table and is like, you never play a hand, you gotta bluff more. So it folds around to the last guy. And I said, remember, told me I gotta bluff more. The dealer's name was And so I don't know if that made him fold, if it helped, obviously it helped because he folded. I don't know if he had a 10 or not. But that's the story there. I'm down about $150. There's still plenty of time. There's a lot of money on the table. We'll see. So a few hands ago, player raised to like eight. I called from late position. Maybe the button cut off. The flop came deuce, deuce, six. He bets into me for 15 on the flop. I called. The turn is whatever, I don't even know. He bets four dollars. I'm like, come on. I make it ten and he calls. The river is an eight. There's no flush, there's no straight. He checks to me. There's about fifty dollars in the pot. I bet forty. He folds. He didn't show what he had. I had quads. I showed him the quads. Maybe I could have bet less? I don't know. We asked for a table change, and I got back with the guy who I played with the other night. Super loose and super drunk and very aggressive and just not a good player. So I raised, and he re-raised from later position. Another player called who was, I'm not sure on his read, for him yet and I didn't like the fact that he called and so I just jammed all in I only had about two hundred and thirty dollars and there was already 70 in the pot and I counted it out and I'm like there's no sense in flatting you just gotta go with it and sure enough the other guy called me with King Jack offsuit and we hold he was drawn to three outs, and so at this point, we're now up on the session. It's about 2.30 in the morning, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. So that happened. Ace-King holds for once. I raise with Ace-King, and I get one caller. Flop comes deuce-deuce-six. I see Beck figuring there's no way he has a deuce in his hand. He calls. I'm thinking pocket pair. I'm thinking pocket pair. Sixes, seven, sevens, eights. You know, obviously, hopefully not sixes. The turn is an ace. And I bet, but I'm a little weary of what he's got. And he calls. The river is inconsequential. I don't remember. It doesn't make a straight, doesn't make a flush, nothing. I check. And he checks behind and shows King Deuce. Offsuit. So 
seriously? Shit. So it's about five o'clock in the morning. One I'm losing about 270 bucks. Because super car dead. I don't know if that's I was playing poorly or too tight or whatever, but I got dealt way more of my share, fair share of deuce seven, deuce nine, deuce six. Seemed like every other hand I had had a deuce in it. The rest of the night was pretty awful. A lot of deuces. I think that's gonna be the title of my first vlog, is a lot of deuces. Even though I did make quad deuces, so that actually makes it more legit. So I recorded the wrap up walking home from the casino, walking back to the hotel from the casino, and it pretty much sucked. It I found that it's actually hard to walk and talk at the same time into a phone, and so I couldn't imagine trying to like, I don't know, drive and talk on the phone at the same time. So it's a good thing nobody ever does that. The lesson that I found after this session, and it's a problem I have had a lot, is that I stayed too long. And I think what you want to do as an amateur is you're there for the social aspect of the game, but you have to be aware of when your playing starts to deteriorate. And the reason that I stayed even longer than I did was because the game got short-handed and I didn't want to be the guy who broke up the game because I left. And it cost me probably an extra 100 or so. Um, after that one hand where I doubled up and I was positive for the session, I stayed about another hour and a half and I bleeded away some money, obviously. And that was a mistake. Uh, you want to leave when your playing deteriorates. You don't want to just stay because you want to keep the game running because the people are there to probably take your money, which is what happened to me. I was editing this episode after I had posted episode one, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who watched episode one and really energized me and encouraged me to continue this. I wasn't sure how I was going to be received and it was beyond my wildest expectations. And I just have a huge, huge thank you to everybody who watched and to everybody who encouraged me and even the people who criticized me. That's all cool. I'm putting this out there for you to enjoy and to let me know where things are need to go to improve. And hopefully that all of us amateur poker players out there can learn a thing or two or at least be entertained by this uh endeavor that I'm putting up and like I said thanks there's gonna be more videos I already have the footage for episode three I just need to edit it and I'm gonna work on that next week so check back in a little while thank you again for watching this go back and watch episode one and hopefully you get some run good hit all your flush draws and all your sets hold up and take it easy, and we'll see you the next time. Thanks. Bye.